One of the more important tools we have when we're dealing with testing is a tool called a code coverage analysis tool. Now there are many, many different tools out there for different languages. This video is going to show a tool called ECL Emma, which is available as an Eclipse plugin, and this is a very, very powerful tool because it gives you a little bit better code coverage metrics than other types of tools may give you. A lot of code coverage tools will simply tell you either the method coverage or method coverage and statement coverage or instruction coverage. That's a starting point that tells you essentially which lines of code have been executed. What ECL Emma will give us is what we actually call branch coverage. So what, with branch coverage it will tell you if I have a conditional statement did I take both the conditional statement as is and did I take essentially the jump from the conditional statement or how many of the different ways that I could go through that conditional statement did I actually take. ECL Emma when plugged into Eclipse gives us that in a color coded mechanism so that we can see things that are truly covered and then we can use that to help us improve our test case writing. Just because we have branch coverage or just because we have statement coverage doesn't mean that we have working code, but it does mean that we've at least covered the code, which is a good starting point if we want to try and find working code. So let's take a look at how we actually do this. So first off, the easiest way to go about getting these tools installed is to go into the Eclipse Marketplace. So in the Eclipse Marketplace, you have the ability to search for the tools. So in our case, what I'd like to do is search for ECL Emma, like so, and it will come up here with ECL Emma Java Code Coverage 3.01. Now in my case, I already have this installed, so there's nothing for me to do. If I didn't have this installed on my machine, there would be a dialog box here allowing me to install this program. Now I also, in this example, am using TestNG which is another tool that is available as a plugin for Eclipse. And there we go. It took just a moment and we can see that I've also got this plugin installed in my Eclipse settings. So if you want to duplicate this example that I'm showing exactly, you would need both of those plugins. For the most part, more often than not, what you're looking at is the ECL Emma side. So let's take a look at how this works. What I have right here is a very, very basic piece of code. It's called a number summer. So this method is going to return the sum of the numbers between the start and the end inclusive. I have initially set the return value to zero. And if the start is greater than the end, I'm going to return zero because these two parameters are out of order. If the start is equal to the end, I'm going to return just a start value because that's the definition I'm giving for this number summer. That may or may not be what you would want long term. And then otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to walk from index or walk from the start to the end one by one, adding the number. And when all is said and done, we get to the end and we're going to return this value. So this is essentially the method that I'm going to place under test. Now I have written a test ng set of tests here, and let me get these corrected here, and I'll put a little comment in here. This test will verify the number summer routine like so. This is the start value. This is the ending value. This is the expected sum value. So what I have right now is one test case. So I have developed a test case where I pass in negative one and I go up to one. My expected value is going to be zero. If we think negative one plus zero gives us negative one plus one is going to give us zero as a total sum. So this is my first test case I've defined. Now, because this is a white box test that we're approaching right now, I've actually put the test path in here, line 9, 12, 17, 18, 19, 18, 19, 18, 19, 23. That is the coverage that I am going to get as far as lines being executed in this code from this particular test value. So what I'd like to do is actually see what happens when I run this. So in my test case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up 
and I'm going to run this as a test ng, but I'm going to collect test coverage information. So I will do that, and automatically the test ng test will be invoked, and the ECL Emma coverage tool will run telling me what has been executed. So I can see down here within my source that in the number summer I had four branches that were covered but two that were missed out of the total of six based on the cases I have. Now I can change some of these settings over here basically by showing or adjusting what is being shown to show line coverage or to show in this case branch coverage or basically method coverage whatever type of coverage I would like to see so in my case I'm concerned right now about branch coverage what I want to do is see which branches were not covered based upon the tests that I passed in so I can go back over here and we can see that this first branch here only one of two branches was covered that's because in my one test case that I passed in my start was less than my end. So it automatically jumped down to this else if. The same thing with this else if. Now in this case it's pretty obvious that these were not covered because I have statements that are read indicating those statements had no coverage. Sometimes I may see yellow if I have a complex conditional where there may be one of the predicates that's not true. That's a slightly different problem to solve with this code coverage tool. What this means to me from writing a white box set of tests is now I need to add some extra tests into my scenario. This is a pretty obvious one. I need something that's going to have start being greater than end. So I will go into my data provider here and I will come up with a value. I got to make just a slight modification to how this is laid out here. So I'm going to move this after my comment block here because what I want to do is take and define, like so, a new set of input values. Now, in my case, what I wanted to do was to have a value where the start was greater than the end. So I'm going to pass in something like 5 and negative 5. Now my expected value is going to be zero. In terms of my test path, what I'm going to have with this is line nine, which is the start of the method. And I'm gonna to go to 12, I'm gonna to go to 13, and then I will go to essentially 23, which is my return value. So I've added this test case in. I can now take what I have right here, let me get rid of that extra comma, and I can again, run this with coverage, like so. We'll take just a moment to recompile the code, rerun it, and we see that now I have five branches covered. I've still got one that's being missed out of the total six. I can click on it and we can see that branch is fully covered. And oh, by the way, this statement is also covered here. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is I need to have a version where the start and the end are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with an example where the start and the end are the same. So in my case here, what I want to have is 5 and 5, and my expected value is going to be 5. My test path that I'm going to get out of this is going to be 9 hyphen 12 hyphen 14 hyphen 15 like so and oh there's a syntax there I need to put a comma there and now we see that if I run this oops coverage as a test ng test now what should happen momentarily is we will see that all of our branches are now covered I can click into it and see that everything matches appropriately. Now, the one thing about this, if we think about the way this branch and the way this code is structured here, one of the things we like to think about in testing is when we have a loop, 
making sure that the loop both executes and doesn't execute. Sometimes that's something that's called infeasible. So in this scenario, if we're thinking about what we would call edge pair testing, what we would want to do is to be able to test the edge where we would come into this else statement and immediately abort out of this while loop, as well as go into the while loop and come back around through. That's where we've got something in this case that would yield infeasible test coverage. Because, in our case here, what I would ideally want is a scenario where I would get down into this loop, but this logic here would end up being false. The problem with that is we can't get to that based upon these two scenarios that I have up here. It just is not feasible to do. So in that type of a case, if we think about an edge pair code coverage, it's not possible based upon the code constructs that we have here. So that's where you need to look a little bit at branch coverage, your control flow graphs and how things tie together. Sometimes something that is feasible in a control flow graph can't be implemented. A tool like this may or may not be able to tell you that that's the case. In this particular case, I have 100% of my branches covered because I've taken each different branch, but I don't necessarily have full edge pair coverage, which would be what we would ideally want when we're dealing with loops. So with that, I'm going to bring this demonstration of using TestNG to generate code coverage in an Eclipse environment to a conclusion.